G'day everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Alex does. My name is Alex. This is the uh, apparently the slowest bushcraft build in all of Australian YouTube bushcrafting apparently. Um, yeah, so here we are. Back to my build. The least educational, slowest bushcrafting build in, in all of uh, Australian YouTube. Um, yeah, we're back in the bush. Interesting times and uh, I'm glad to be here and I'm glad to be able to make some content for you during these times. As I was on my way in, a couple of quotes came to mind. The first being, with great power comes great responsibility. And the second being, we were so busy figuring out if we could, we just didn't ask if we should. Now I don't know what those two quotes have anything to do with me being here today, but I'll let you ponder on those. Um, but anyway, I'm here to make some content for you and make you happy. So I'm not staying overnight tonight. I am just here to do a day's work in the bush just for the day. And then I will be packing my gear and going out of here. I am not camping overnight. That's the decision I have made. It was a very late, late decision. Uh, my, I had planned to stay overnight right up to last night. But I'm not going to continue on the reasons why and all those sorts of things. Let's just stick to the positives. But I'm going to try every effort to make today no different to the usual first day camping videos. I'm going to be doing a little bit of work on the fireplace and I'm going to be doing some cooking basically. And uh, hang around to the end for a snippet of what you'll see coming up next week. Um, so I'm pretty excited for today's feed too. Uh, we are reintroducing to the channel the uh, camp oven. Uh, so last time I had camp oven here, I'm pretty sure from memory we didn't even have the four corner posts in the ground. So it's been that long that that thing's been sitting at home in storage. So I brought it out. So I'm going to do some uh, curried lamb shanks for uh, a feed this afternoon. So that's going to be awesome. They're going to be slow cooked on the fire. So I'm going to get a fire going probably. Actually, I'm probably going to do the prep. And let's do the prep and the cooking first. Hey, eh? Let's mix it up a bit. Let's go a bit wild. <laughs> do that. Um, so we'll do the food and the prep. It's just a one pot, chuck it all in. No fuss. I'm like, yeah, let's let's make it as simple as possible. Actually, I'm thinking of the ingredients now. It's probably not going to come across that simple, but I'm going to do my best to make it appear simple because cooking should be simple. Um, and then, uh, yeah, we'll get that done. We'll get the fire going. Then we'll do some work on the fireplace, all right? And uh, go and have, we'll have to go and get some rocks and do the mudding and all that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, exciting news. You may have noticed the keen eyes amongst you um, that over the last couple of videos I've been adding a feather or two to my cap, uh, not just because I think I deserve it, um, but on the way in I found a new feather. The reason why I started doing that, I mean apart from apparently that's what all the cool bushcraft YouTubers do, uh, put a feather in their hat, um, and I want to be cool too, please. But no, I, I'd actually thought uh, what started it was I was at the time I was thinking about this possibility potentially, and I, I don't know if it's going to happen, potentially the idea of making, you know, a bow for hunting and then maybe arrows and then of course arrows need feathers and so I, you rarely, rarely ever see feathers in the bush. So I thought when I do see them, I'll grab them and stick them in my hat. But check out the feather I found on the way in today. I was pretty excited. So I thought I'll, I'll grab that, check her out. Near your beauty. Hopefully that shows up on camera. That's a lyre bird. Tail feather. Stunning. So, I don't know if I'll leave this one in my hat. I think I might just leave it here at the shelter. Um, because it's likely to snag on something and come out. And I don't really want to lose it. Bloody beautiful. Alright, so uh, I'll get myself set up and... Um, Start the food prep and then actually no, I'll start the fire first, then we'll do the food prep and um, yeah, we'll, we'll get that going. Still pretty early, it's all 20 past nine. Anyway, welcome back. Right, yeah, well this is a refreshing uh, change to the normal video format, eh? Being able to do cooking first thing in the morning because um, obviously this is going to sit by the fire uh, for the next few hours and slow cook to the point where the meat should be falling off the bone. Okay so as I mentioned before I'm doing a curried lamb shank. So I've got a couple of shanks. In terms of ingredients uh, when it comes to this curry, you know, now you know me, 
I'm pretty slap happy when it comes to me meals. Like I like them to taste good and I like to put in a little bit of effort, but then I like to just not stress about it because I just, I know cooking's one of those things that people just seem to stress over and it just shouldn't be that. It should be something that's fun and uh, experimental even and if you get it wrong, you get it wrong, whatever. You know, I've always had this philosophy is, uh, is that, um, you know, if you know individual tastes of things that you like, oh, damn it, I just realised I forgot something. Bugger. Ah, oh, bugger. That's all right. I learned to live with it. Not stressing, not stressing. It was just a key ingredient. Not the not the lamb shanks, fortunately. Where was I? I've lost my train of thought. Bugger. I left a I left a fresh bunch of coriander at home. And I really wanted to add it in, one because I love it, and two because I know a lot of people don't. <laughs> um alright. Okay, anyway. I've lost, totally lost my train of thought. Right, so where was I going? Yeah, cooking should be fairly stress-free. So for me, when it comes to a curry, it's basically a process of let's get every single spice that I've got in my spice cupboard down onto the kitchen bench, pick up the oregano or oregano if, you, if you're American, put that back in the cupboard and throw what you've got left into the pot and uh, that's, your, um, that's your spice for your curry. So what I'll do, I'll just run through, I think, um, what I'm getting, typically too, obviously, when it comes to cooking in a camp oven, I'm no expert, I've had it twice on this channel, and I'm 1-0, and oh. <laughs> the first time was a disaster, and uh, the second time was a success, and there's all sorts of theories and processes that people subscribe to on preheating and how far from the fire and all these sorts of things the only thing i've learned is don't put it in the middle of a fire and put build the fire up over it because you'll end up with a bowl of charcoal typically if i was going to do this i would i would preheat it and then i'd probably brown off my meat with some onions and some garlic and then start adding in the rest of my ingredients but i thought it'd be interesting just to chuck everything in right from the get-go a proper full-on simple no fast curry one pot meal let's just throw it all in sit it by the fire for the next few hours and we'll just see what happens and fingers crossed it turns out edible eh so let's run through the very short list of ingredients that i've got right so first thing to go into the pot is going to be some ghee a lot of my stuff is um is covered in yogurt because i had a bit of a yogurt explosion it seems in my bag that wasn't smart. So some ghee. Again, I'm not. I don't know what the recipe would say in terms of measurements. I'm just gonna. I don't know. Whatever seems right. Let's chuck that in there. Maybe a bit more, eh? Ghee. Next, I've just got a bag of onion that I've roughly pre-chopped. In. Now I've got and bought a. Uh, just a tube of pre-crushed or pressed garlic. I don't know, that much. Right, now let's get the meat out of the way. So as I mentioned, I've got a pair of uh, lamb shanks. I'm just gonna cut that open. A pair of lamb shanks straight out of the packet, in the pot. Salt and pepper, about that much. Right, now for the plethora of spices. Cumin or cumin? I think it'll be cumin. I'll kind of measure this out. I, I don't know why. Just so you can see how much I'm putting in. That'll probably do. Turmeric. Ground coriander seed, so we do get a little bit of coriander in there at least. I don't know, that much. Smoked paprika, paprika, smoked paprika, smoked paprika, paprika. That sounds weird now I'm saying it over and over. Paprika, 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 paprika. Smoked paprika. That much. Cinnamon. Probably not too much of that. Cinnamon. Bibble. I don't know. I don't know. Cardamom pod. Mm. 
We're almost there. Nutmeg. Garam masala. Now, I'm sure I read somewhere that garam masala is basically a mixture of all that crap I've just put in there, but most recipes say this and all that stuff, I think, so. Chili, ground chili powder. Cloves, ground cloves. I think that's it. So that's probably five, six of all the spices I have in my cupboard. This is typically my method of cooking. I just get a rough idea of what's in things and then just go for it, really. Now, obviously, we need some mo moist, moist. We need to make it a bit moist. There's no moisture in there, so let's chuck some moisture in there. So I've got a tin of tomato puree. I normally would also put into this a tin of, like, um, peeled and chopped tomatoes, or you could even put fresh tomatoes in there, I suppose. I just didn't think to get any. And then we've got a um, thing of uh, chicken stock. I do also have some yogurt, but I'm not gonna put the yogurt in until a bit later. And I've also got some lentils, but I will put those in a bit later too. So I think that actually needs a little bit more water. So you can see what it looks like there. We're almost there. Stir it around. There we go. That's a one pot experimental, just chuck it in, lamb shank curry. It's good. It's great. Lovely. That's good, eh? It's good. That's good stuff. Put hairs on your chest. All right. There we go. Okay, let's get a lid on this and we'll sit it next to the fire. Oh, this is load number three. So far with rocks today, I think. This will be the last one. I'm having to go further and further for good rocks. I'm also using the bigger pack back, 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 back. I'm using my bigger backpack today because I only brought the one because I'm not staying overnight. So I don't know how I feel about that. I can certainly fit more in the bigger one than in the smaller one. Somehow that just ends up weighing more. Who would have thunk it? Go figure, eh? Now, while I think about it, and the fact that I'm stopping with all this weight on my back oh, to bring this up kind of demonstrates how passionate I am about this concept and I'm not the only one to have brought this up recently we're all globally we I'm okay how do I do this I'm not I'm not getting Alex don't get on your soapbox <laughs> the world globally is going through some issues at the moment and Australia is certainly no different and it's a tough time for everybody but particularly it's a tough time for youtubers and uh, and you know, obviously outdoor and camping and bushcrafting YouTubers. Um, yes, there are some that live outside affected areas that can continue doing what they're doing. I feel for people that can't even do as much as this, like, you know, come out, have access to places like this during lockdown. But yeah, just spare a thought for you and give, give, give some love to your favorite YouTubers. You know, they're obviously, you know, they're, they're, they're trying to find that balance between coming up with regular content because one they want to appease their viewers and keep their viewers coming to their channel and but two they're also trying to grow a business because if you're going to get serious about YouTube it really is a business you have to look at it like a business you're not going to survive the first couple of years it takes to get from a nothing to earning money unless you look at it as a business and I'm I'm really I'm, I'm, I'm nowhere near where I want to be so I'm obviously putting a lot of effort into this channel um, and what you see on camera is just so much of a small fraction of what's involved in getting something uploaded and presented to you as a viewer so 
Obviously, it's very difficult to maintain that while you're in a lockdown situation. And uh, a recent really positive example of the ingenuity of, of uh, YouTubers would be um, Harley Wild. Uh, go and check out his channel. He recently did a camping video from his backyard for, for that very reason. So I think hopefully you're gonna start seeing, well, hopefully, hopefully it's gonna end soon, but you're probably gonna see a little bit more of that type of ingenuity and different ways of coming up with content from other outdoor YouTubers who um, don't live outside the directly affected areas. So I, I just wanted to mention that. What I'm gonna do, it'd be nice if we could formalize some way of, you know, I know, I know I've talked about this before, of forming like a an online community of Australian YouTubers. We kind of are, and there's some good Facebook pages on, uh, on Facebook that I'm sure you're probably already a member of if you're in Australia. Um, but yeah, well, I'm just gonna put some links in the description to um, some of my favorite Australian YouTube content creators. Um, go and check them out. Um, and if you are watching and you are an Australian YouTube content creator, not, maybe even it's not in outdoors, because only a fraction of what I watch is outdoors. I'm a mad car guy. I like engineering and science and all those sorts of stuff. And there's a few podcasts and stuff that I follow quite religiously. Um, so yeah, if you're an Australian content creator, please jump in the comments on this video and feel free to promote yourself, put a link to your channel and uh, yeah, hopefully I'll be able to, um, hopefully this video will drive some traffic your way. All right, all right, I've said that. Now I've got to get this weight off my back. <laughs> All right, that's that batch of mud over and done with now. So let's go and have a look and see what it looks like inside. So I managed to get another row of rocks on there. So that's two courses. So it's really, you know, it's only probably what, 12 inches, 13 inches until we get to the top. I'm trying to obviously maintain this a little bit nicer and squarer and flatter than it is on the other side. You can certainly see though, obviously where the clay cracks and everything. But I think that just adds to the look of it. I think that's all good. I'm not. Uh, I'm not a fussy man. And if if I really wanted to, I th I think once it's finished, I could um, come in with a scrub and brush and a bit of water, and scrub the the clay out just off the exposed rock and leave the, the just the rock and it'll leave just the the uh, clay mortar in between. Nice. Let's go and look at it from the other side, but height-wise, look at that, that's, uh, that's about as high as my mouth. <laughs> yeah, so close, so close. What a beast indeed. Look at that. So we've got some big rocks on there today. Um, I liked how I managed to get, again, some more overhanging because we want the opening to come in a bit more. Um, it's got to be smaller than the big rock that's over there. 
which I'm pretty sure it's smaller than that already. Uh, it just needs to close in probably a bit more this way, I think. Um, I'm a little bit concerned if, if we leave this as the opening, this is my only concern with what I've done today. If we leave that with the opening, that's about level so you can see that slopes inwards. So I'll have to make sure that if this is where the opening is, that that slopes outwards so rain doesn't run in. I would think I'd still like to come in a little bit more, I think. Maybe to about here and only have an opening about that big. Um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with the progress there. That's what it looks like when you look down. Very cool, eh? Very cool. So again, this is me standing next to it. It's shoulder height from the outside and I'm standing lower than the where the, uh, the fireplace starts. So is that for a thumbnail? Looking serious. Looking pretty good. Yum. Right here, folks, well, time's getting on, so it's time to tuck into some tucker. Yeah, I'd probably like to give it another hour, to be honest, but um, I'm under a bit of a time crunch because I've got probably about, I think it's actually the way I came in today and the way I'm going out, I think there's about 45 kilometres of winding, certainly not as the crow flies, but winding, narrow, dirt, unposted, unsigned, unlit roads that I've got to take back so um, it'd be good if I could uh, do that before it gets dark but anyway we'll go and get the pot and um, serve up eh I'll tell you what it smells good sizzling all right yum yeah I think the lentils could have done with a little bit more and maybe I oh, know, I think the meat's almost, no, it's, might be just right. Let's get, let's get that one out. Yum. Look at that. I should have brought, I was gonna, I should have brought a ladle. That's just a bit of bone, that is. And this would obviously be good with some rice or mashed potatoes or something right yum and to finish that off I've got and I'm gonna use it because it exploded all through my bag so I want my money's worth some yogurt all right god that looks good how good does that look eh yum it smells amazing Let's dig in. I'm not sure that this meat is going to technically fall off. No, oh, it's actually, it's pretty good. Oh, yeah, nice. That is so perfectly cooked. Mm. Oh, it just melts. It just melts in your mouth. How good a lamb shank, so you don't even need a knife. Bloody hot. Oh. No, I don't even need a knife. It's coming off with the fork. That is perfectly cooked. Smashed it. Lentils could have done with another half hour. Oh, I've got the heat spot on too, like just enough spice. Definitely would have been better with coriander. Um, I like to use all the coriander, so the stems and the root I chop up and it goes in early and then all the leaves I chop up from a whole bunch I would have chucked on there. Oh, but that's delicious, there we go. Lamb, uh, lamb shank curry in the bush, eh? Give it a go. And don't worry about recipes and just, just chuck whatever you got in the pot.
that was genuinely a one pot, no fuss, chuck it all in in one go, sit it next to the fire meal. You cannot get any easier than that. There's enough there for two. I'll be taking the rest of that home and having it tonight. Yum. I'm going to go and smash this. Alright folks, well it's just about time for me to go. I've almost uh, finished packing up there. I've just got a bucket of water here I'm going to chuck on the fire, which obviously I wouldn't normally do because it normally would have gone out by the time that I leave. Um, but I don't want to leave it burning there, even though it would obviously be 100% safe in the fireplace. You know, smoky bear and all, got to do the right thing. Um, got me meal packed up. Weighs a ton. <laughs> As if it didn't weigh enough already, now it's got that curry in there. And my backpack's all ready to go. So anyway, I hope you really enjoyed this. Uh, I hope you really enjoyed come, this video, and I thank you for giving me your time and coming along to the channel again and supporting us. Um, yeah, it's unfortunate. I'm sorry that I'm not staying overnight, but you know, you're pretty much still seeing all the same content you would usually see on day one of one of my camps anyway, because um, obviously once it's not going to be much longer before it gets dark, and uh, I normally stop filming by then. So, yeah, I suppose you don't really miss out on that much. But a good stay. It was fairly productive, given that we were only here for the day. Um, I'm totally happy with the progress on the fireplace. The fact that it's, you know, this high now is insane. You know, to think back all those months ago where it was just that, it was just bare dirt. And um, you know, that original ring of fire, the original stone ring in dug into the soil go back and look at that if you haven't seen those to see the difference it is now yeah look uh yeah another thing i was going to ask um obviously the you know people not the the cooking aspect of the show um of the show <laughs> the cooking aspect of my videos is uh it takes you know a large chunk of the the program yeah and look as much as i'm a fairly creative guy I've, you know, sometimes I do struggle to come up with ideas of things to cook. So if there's anything you'd like to see me try cooking um, here in the shelter, uh, yeah, put it in the comment below. And um, if it's something that I'd like to eat, then uh, I'd be happy to give it a crack. Make sure you come back next week. I know what's going to be on uh, the footage next week already. Um, I will be talking about uh, a part of... Did I mention this already in today's video? I don't know, but I'll be talking about a certain part of the, the structure and uh, my plans. And I'm also doing a tool review, a review of saws. Saws. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Make sure you come back for that one. What else? I think that's pretty much it. I'm out of here now, so I'm going to go lug my stuff. At least I only have to do one trip up to the car today because I didn't bring as much stuff, not carrying a tent and sleeping gear and all that sort of stuff. So I'm going to do my trip up to the car. I'm completely confident that I will get out of this forest before it gets dark. Thank you for coming along. Please consider subscribing. Smash that thumbs up button. Hit the uh, bell for notification. Join the conversation below. Um, have a look in the comments below and I will put links to some of my favourite channels, YouTube channels. And add your own if you've got your own. Put those in the comments. All right. See you later. Thanks for coming along. But I might be biting up more than I can chew. So I bought a new saw. It's a long way around to just saying I've got a new saw, which is not new. Second hand. Anyway, shall we show you what I got?